A very popular question that people have is, should I use points or polygons for my training samples in Earth Engine? If you're coming from another desktop-based system, some of them use polygons, some of them use points. What works well with Earth Engine? The short answer is point samples are preferred. So if you can have precise point samples on the pixels that you want to use as training samples, that is preferred. But in some cases, polygons may be better to generate a lot of data, but you need to be careful about using polygons. Let's understand why polygons are not preferred. And if you want to use it, what are the, some of the limitations? Here is a region. This is a Sentinel-2 image. You have this landscape. You can see there's a water body here. There is some vegetation here and there's a barrel cloud. You might be tempted to say, I want to use some training samples from this region. I can just draw polygons. I can draw a polygon over this water body. I can draw some polygon over this vegetation area and some bare region and say, use this and you know, consider this as my training samples. If you do this, when you run your classification, Earth Engine will consider each pixel within the polygon to be a training sample. That means it'll say all of the pixels that fall within this water body should be used as a sample for training the classifier and say each pixel is water. One problem with this is since the polygons all have different sizes, you'll end up with a lot of training samples for one class versus smaller samples for other class. It's very hard to control how many samples you get with polygons. That means if you have a lot of samples for one class, the classifier will get biased towards that. So we want to maintain the balance of the class. So there's one problem with using polygons that you will get a lot of samples, but it, it will be imbalanced. Second problem with the polygon is you, we just draw a polygon like this in low resolution imagery. You may not be able to see it, but if you look at this polygon over high resolution imagery, we see that there is some island with vegetation that was in this water body. And now when you use the polygon and all of the samples were used for training, you had a sample which you tagged as water, but it's actually vegetation. And your model performance will go down because there is confusion. Yeah, so you need to be careful about not including other classes within polygons and even there is a few pixels which are of other class that can cause problems. So how to overcome this? Well, if you polygons are useful sometimes because you can quickly generate a lot of samples from homogeneous areas. If you want to do this, two things you need to take care. One is make sure you draw the polygons which are very precise, not include objects of other classes within that. And secondly, do not sample all points. You can use random sampling and say, I have a bunch of polygons that I've drawn and from these polygons, I only want to extract 100 samples in total for the class that I'm interested in. And you can say, give me 100 samples for all the classes. And that means you are able to extract balanced classes out of polygon data. Most machine learning algorithms are not very data hungry. Again, if you can tr have drop points very precisely over land cover that you're sure of, that will generate in a high quality model. But sometimes if you want to say, I have a homogeneous region, let me just draw a polygon and sample some pixels from there. So if you want to do this, be very precise in drawing the polygons and also use random sampling to make sure that you only extract the number of pixels that you need. Your code for classification has to be modified accordingly. We have code available here. Let me show you what this code looks like. The workflow remains the same. We have this one function. It says, given a polygon, give me n number of random points from within the polygon. So you have drawn polygon as a training samples, and then you say, for my urban region, get me 10 points. For bear, get me 10 points. For water, get me 10 points, and so on. And again, the code, the way it is structured, you can mix points and polygons both. So you say, oh, I have this really nice training sample. I want to use it, drop a point. In the same layer, you can also drop a polygon. And you can, if you use this code, it'll sample both correctly from there.